Hey folks, welcome to the channel, Thinking Theology. I'm Don. The channel itself is just about thinking, about developing rational arguments, or arguments that make sense. In other words, that's how we say it. It just has to make sense. So sometimes we have our faith challenged, sometimes strengthened, sometimes completely obliterated, depending on what we find out. But when we say that we're in pursuit of truth, so-called truth, however we define that, then we got to be open to being like corrected or whatever. I don't take a hardcore stance on the channel on dogma. I don't care what people believe. I really don't. But when people develop arguments about things, I look at the arguments. I was a philosophy major in college. I like logic. And in any realm, whether it's scientific endeavor, anybody's making a political statement or whatever, I look at not only the logic involved or the rationale involved and how they got there, but also how they stand in their opinion. So anyway, that's just a little backdrop to, to this one. And this is a simple one about Trinitarian dogma, the doctrine of the Trinity, that there could be three co-equal, co-eternal persons in the Godhead, each of whom is individually fully God, but there are not three gods, there's only one God. And so you've got God the Father, you've got God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, to which is appended a statement that there are not three gods, though, there's only one. And then you've got the hypostatic union and the indwelling interpenetration of the three, and ultimately it winds up being a mystery. Here's one of the problems with this. Does the doctrine of the Trinity, or it's a question, does the doctrine of the Trinity actually make there to be four gods? And this has been said over the two millennia since the doctrine itself was in um, embryo and then developed over time. You've got God the Father. He's fully God. God the Son. He's fully God. God the Holy Spirit. Fully God. Then you've got the Trinity taken as a whole. So is that a fourth God? And people say, oh, no, 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 you don't understand the doctrine. Well, there's a reason it's been, by its greatest advocates over almost 2,000 years, been said to be a mystery. It's because it's not understood. So these are legitimate questions. Whatever your answer is doesn't matter to me, but I, po I put it out there because the channel is about thinking and thinking about theology or thinking theology, theological topics. So... Leave your comments. I read them. And uh, But if you have an idea for a video or a question that you'd like me to do, just drop it in the comments and uh, I may get to it. So there you go. All right, folks. Have fun with that one. I'll see you on another video. Have a great day and keep thinking theology. Hey there. If you would like to read more in depth on the subject of Trinitarian, Unitarian dogma, the debate that has taken place over the millennia, I've published this book in 1998 titled Our Heavenly Father Has No Equals, and it's out of print, but I've since republished it to Kindle. Here's what the new cover looks like. The book that I published will elucidate the issues with Trinitarian dogma. That's a perspective that I come at it from uh, in the book. So if you'd like it, you can get it on Amazon Kindle, and the link is in the description box below. So I wish you well in your journey and hopefully this will help you along the way.